thank you for joining us for another episode of Skin Interviews. I am one of your two hosts. My name is George Scandalis, and this guy is Nathan Strong. How's it going, Nathan? Well, I'm a little one-eyed at the moment, to be honest. Well, why are you looking like a pirate? What happened to your eye? One of my uh, kids scrapped. Okay, so I, I this is the emergency. Put it out. Don't lie. Your wife knocked you one in the eye for spending too much time with me. <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably. What chores did you not do at home, young man? Oh, what chores? Oh, there's so many chores to do during COVID, isn't there? So what? So what exactly happened? Your kid scratched your eye. Kid scratched my eye, and now I have a bung eye, basically. Wow, that sucks, man. Yeah. Good thing today I don't have kids. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, let's welcome to our show one of Toronto's celebrity dermatologists. This is exciting. She's big time, this girl. Like she's, she's really big time. She's big time. And you know what? I, I really, really do enjoy her company and I enjoy her business. And I really like her business partner too. Um, yep. But today we're all about her. She's our celebrity dermatologist in Toronto. Welcome from Compass Dermatology. Dr. Julia Carroll. Hello. Hey. Hello. I miss you. I know. I I realize I'm such a people person. I always knew that, but it, it's so, uh, you know, solid in who I am now. I can't handle this. Yeah. It, it's. I miss. I mean. I mean. I miss you. I miss Dr. Sonia Cook. I miss your staff. Yeah. But at least you know what I've been getting to see you on a drink with a derm. I love it. Yes, it's my new little pet project. First of all, I would love to be drinking with you anytime. So you made me want to go get my like go to med school and become a dermatologist so I can be on drink with a derm. Well, no, it's not. Okay, yeah, we can cheers. cheers. I'm from the Maritimes. We say sociable. Sociable. Can you do it with coffee? Does it count? Yeah, it's a bit like toasting the queen with wine. It's not really appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> You are a Toronto queen dermatologist, so I'll, I'll accept that it's not appropriate. How do you <laughs> yeah, so a drink with the derm has been really fun, but it's actually not, I'm the derm you're drinking with. And the, okay. the, so far we've had non-derms on as uh, guests. Yes. So the idea is it's marrying uh, two of my favorite things, uh, chatting with people, catching up and cocktails. So it's kind of like when you meet a friend after work and you go for a drink, you have the drink right after work. When the drink is done, you go home. I love that. Now, is it always Thursday at five o'clock? We've been doing that, but I've had a lot of requests from people because there's a lot of people coast to coast that are watching. So my maritime friends, that time's okay for them. But some of the people that are just getting out of work in Toronto aren't finding it so convenient or they don't want to crack their cocktails so early. So we're going to play around with the times a little bit. Okay, cool. Amazing. And they can get, they can catch a drink with the derm on your Instagram, which is at Dr. Julia Carroll, which is on the screen for anybody that wants to uh, follow her. Yeah. And of course, you can follow her professional website with uh, her and her partner at compassdermatology.ca. Yeah. Soon to be new and improved. Ooh, you guys are making improvements. You just did the clinic. Yeah, you know, it's this. we're using this time to do all these, the big work, the deep work that we've been meaning to do. So it's been really great that way, revamping things, training, uh, working on websites, um, you know, some fun stuff that's coming up. Amazing. Should we get right into the interview and get to know you as a way that led you up to Dr. Julia Carroll? Go for it. All right. Let's go right back to ground zero, day you were born. You enter this world, you take your big first breath, you cry a little bit and your parents say, we're gonna name her, what's your full name? Julia Marie Carroll. And is there any meaning behind your name? Were you named after anybody? Julia, they just liked. Marie is my grandmother, uh, Amelda Marie Carroll's middle name. Oh, I like that name, Amelda Marie Carroll. I know, they should have named Amelda the middle part because of the shoe obsession, but she wasn't a thing back. <laughs> <laughs> and were you born in Toronto? I was born in Toronto, yes. But I consider myself a maritimer. Did you live out there for a while? So I live. I moved out there in grade seven. Okay. New Brunswick, then Nova Scotia. And so formative years were definitely in the Maritimes. And my father is from the Maritimes. So we always spend our summers out east. 
And it's been sort of the thread throughout my life. That's beautiful. Do you have siblings? I have a brother, Scott. Scott, and is Scott in the medical profession? Not at all. So no. Scott went into the family business, which uh, was uh, car dealerships. Okay. And so my dad and my brother worked together for years. And then he retired, even though he's my younger brother. Hmm, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, but now he's back in uh, business again, and uh, he's a yacht broker. Amazing. Well, and I know that you like yachts. Should we bring the photo up now? Yeah. You look. Everything ready to go. Let's let's look at this here. Okay. Oh, there's Scott right there. So is Scott the guy with the tuna? That's my brother, Scott. Yeah. I just thought it was really cool. That's him catching a tuna. And when he was younger, he was a big entrepreneur and he and his friend Jeff had a shark fishing business. They used to run out of a 23 foot whaler. They would take tourists out wow. and catch sharks. <laughs> That's amazing. Is that you with dreads? Yes, I thought you guys would like that. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's actually his friend Jeff, the one he had. The, so he's like a second brother to me. Yeah. Uh, he lives actually in Abu Dhabi. Um, and I spent, uh, we're jumping all over the place, but I spent a summer in Africa uh, with my really good friend, Stephanie Smith, who's an infectious disease doctor. Go Stephanie, she's very busy these days. Um, and I got dreadlocks while I was there. So that's just after I came back with dreadlocks in my hair. That's amazing. That tuna is huge, eh? No, yummy. Wow. <laughs> All right. So, and how about you? Tell me about your, your family, the family you've made now. Do you have children? I have a daughter. Her name is Abigail and she's almost 10 years old. There that's she is. Beautiful. So a couple pictures there up in the top. Um, that's us. Last year we went to Japan and South Korea um, and we looked at North Korea. We didn't get in, obviously. But uh, that's us at a sumo wrestling match. And then uh, um, when Abby breaks her stuffies, I don't really know how to sew uh, material, but I'm good at sewing skin, so I just bring her in the lab. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. Uh, yeah. Uh, our cat, Solo. Well, um, um, yeah, and then another travel picture. So that's my husband and I. We went to uh, India one weekend for a wedding. We were there wow. for four days. We went to seven parties. It was fantastic. Wow. That's amazing. Does Abigail express what she wants to become when she gets older yet? Does she have any idea? Well, she's very clear that she doesn't want to be a doctor so far, <laughs> but I've been homeschooling her at my office. Um, so I'm hoping that a little bit is seeping in. Uh, but right now she's talking about being an architect or interior designer. So um, she has that little artistic bent to her, which her father has as well. And I guess I do um, at the end of a needle. Yeah. Absolutely. So I'm going to bring up some more photos here, Julia, just of you growing up. And, and talk to us a little bit about growing up. So I grew up partly in, Nova, uh, partly in Toronto and then in Nova Scotia. We've always been a family that spent a lot of time on the water. Um, so the first picture is of me sitting on the back of my parents' boat. Um, we would always go away on the weekends with our, on the boat, with the boating family. And that's something that as a family, we, we have continued as well. It's really our community is the, the boating community, sailing community. Um, and then the one on the far right is actually, um, a friend of mine, Jeff Wright, and we ran for student union when I was in university. So I was the president of the students union and he was my vice president. Uh, and that, that's what that picture is. The middle one, I think, is really telling in terms of, you know, where I ended up. That's me in the hospital at nine years old. So the same age my daughter is right now. And um, I was in a huge car accident, ended up spending three months in the hospital in traction. Um, and that's so that's me in the hospital. Wow. I never knew that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, that's one of interviews, young man. To I get know. To <laughs> we're, learn we're, we're learning so much. So um, was it always in the cards for you being a doctor when you were growing up? Well, I think really the the TSN turning point, to be very Canadian, um, was, that, was that, that accident. So I was hit by a car when I was nine years old. Um, you know, it was touch and go whether I was going to live. Ended up spending three months in the hospital. 
And I really developed a very tight knit relationship with the medical team that I worked with. I lived at a hospital. And then from there, I always wanted to be a doctor. Wow. Cool, cool, cool. And were there, like, apart from like, obviously doctors, were there any other heroes in your life growing up? You know, I was thinking about that. And I really think the nurses and the doctors that looked after me, you know, were those heroes because um, they, I, I saw what they did day to day. You know, it was interesting because I had um, a double room. And so I had, you know, I was the, 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 the staple that was there all the time. Like the nurses would go away on holidays and they'd bring me presents back from their holidays. <laughs> and, um, you know, I, they, we knew them inside out. Uh, but I saw the, the patients that were beside me, you know, I had women coming in and out with eating disorders, kids with appendicitis. It was a very small little community hospital that I was in. Um, and so I just saw how they impacted those people's lives and the changes they made. And um, yeah, so I think those really were my heroes. Cool. And maybe yeah. Prince. M maybe, sorry? Maybe Prince. That's what my dad said, Prince. <laughs> yes. I don't know if he's really someone to look up to. <laughs> I do like his music. Well, he lived a crazy life as well. Yeah. So um, uh, tell us your funniest story that you've brought with us today. Okay. I, I, I may tell you to erase this afterwards, but. <laughs> no, no. This is the whole point of skit views. I mean, okay. So this is, I think, a thing about me is I love rules. I like to make rules, but I'm not really the best at following the rules. <laughs> okay. Other people don't follow the rules. So anyway, uh, when I was in grade nine, uh, I was out with my friends, you know, bopping around Bedford, Nova Scotia, and my parents had a dinner party. And I just said, oh, I'm going out to meet my friends. I'll be back at 10. Well, we're in the McDonald's parking lot, which is where you hang out in grade nine in, in Bedford. And uh, we had some beer in our backpacks and <laughs> taught us and my friend Heather was staying over with me um, and the police brought us home in the middle of my parents dinner party to the front door in the cop car <laughs> <laughs> so you know they 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 you know put us upstairs and they we thought we got away with it so we're upstairs and we're like oh my god we, we just, they, there's, it's no big deal. And the next day we were going um, down to our cottage, uh, Heather and I, and the rest of the family. So on the way there, my dad pulls into the RCMP um, station. And you have to know also that my dad is the son of an RCMP officer. Uh, so he's no stranger to what's going on. And he also was kind of a man about town. So he probably called ahead. And they took us in and questioned us for an hour because we said it wasn't our beer and we thought they believed us. Um, and yeah, so the tables got turned. We thought we got away with it, but oh no, we got questioned at the police station. I think it was all an act now when I look back on it. That that <laughs> it on it. And then we went down to the cottage for the weekend and we were grounded, which whatever. So, Were your parents strict growing up? I think they were. They would probably say they weren't, but yeah, they were pretty tough. My mom's a teacher, um, and then my dad. I think being the um, being the son of an RCMP officer, there they are. Um, probably was uh, um, you know did come from a sort of military esque background, but um, would you say you're strict with Abigail? Oh my God, no, no. Like. And are your parents totally different, like grandparents with Abigail, and which is in most cases? They, you know, my dad still gets pretty upset about the mess. Uh, <laughs> the mess has definitely, you know, I have structured my life around my disorganization to become very organized, but I think that gene runs strong. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Tell me about growing up, your first celebrity crush. Okay, well, we already talked about it, Prince. So it was Prince, 100%. I, for sure. So I used to run a newsletter and, and I would sign it princess and I would painstakingly go to my dad's office and, and put all these articles together and mail it out to all my friends. I feel so sorry for them. And I'd sign my name princess in that same princey kind of writing. What about this guy here? What about this guy here on the, on this guy uh -huh. here? Is he one of your crushes as well? Well, he's maybe an adult crutch. That's uh, Nacho Figuera. Uh, and he's an Argentinian polo player. So my husband and I went on a um, vacation to Argentina 
and we got to watch him play polo. And then we, you know, we got a little VIP experience and uh, I got to take my picture with him. He's very sweaty because he had just played polo, but he's the guy that's actually in the, so he's a polo player and he and his beautiful blonde wife and beautiful children are also in the polo ads. He's gorgeous. He's not bad. <laughs> should, I, should I put that photo back up for you two to have another look at? <laughs> I, I, you may have to email it to me later. <laughs> um, you work Instagram, and I will email you that picture. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Um, tell me your all-time favorite Prince song if you had to pick one. Oh. Mm. That's really hard. There's one that I like that's a little bit unknown called Seven. It's a real does, power song. How does that How does it go? Oh, seven and we'll watch them fall. And in the way I love them, we will smoke them all. Do you know it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm still dancing. That, that's going to be stuck in my head all day. It's a power song. And the other thing that's interesting about that song is it was on um, the album that he, I think, I could be making a mistake, but I think it was on the album that he put out when he was the symbol. And it was the only good song on that album. I thought um, it was a lot older than that. I didn't realize that. Yeah. Um, tell me the last lie you told Abigail? That we're not getting a mouse as a pet today? <laughs> <laughs> that you're not getting one? Yeah, so you asked me if I'm strict. So last night we made, she really wants a pet, so we settled on this thing called an Egyptian spiny mouse. I don't know why. There's <laughs> a pet store up down the street from us has one and they're willing to, to sell it right now. And so I, we made up all these rules and this morning I woke up and she already broken one of the rules. Oh. I kind of want this little pet, so. So you're gonna get it. Yeah, so I'm not strict. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we know you're. Uh, we we ready to know that you're a talented dermatologist. Tell me one of your other hidden talents. I mean, you're a pretty good singer there too, from what that's, I heard. I think that's my little hidden talent. I'm not an amazing singer, but I think I'm a I'm a better singer than most people would expect. And I love music. Um, I'm a pretty awful guitar player. Um, which is a, was a goal. I was trying to get better at guitar, but I haven't touched it. Uh, so that's kind of that would be something I want to add to my list: is get back to guitar. I'm, I think it's the maritime in me. I love music. I love you know getting people together. Uh, th those maritime tunes, everyone joining in. Uh, you know the washboard instruments, uh, the drums. I love that. Are you a shower singer? Uh, no, I don't really sing in the shower. I think in the shower. Uh, I, I I have a full blown Beyonce concert in the show. <laughs> My hair is going, everything's moving. You know, you know what? I remember you in Mexico getting on the karaoke, and you're. I love karaoke. Yeah. Except for they, they don't turn the vocals up high enough because yeah. that was really awful. So it frustrates me because I actually want to. No, you blew people away. I remember that. It was it was later in the night, but it was very very impressive. Maybe maybe that's why it was impressive. <laughs> it was more about your state of mind than my voice. Yeah, no. Oh well, hey, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. So let's talk about let's talk about cooking. Who's the who's the head chef at home? So I would say uh, I am. Over the years, I've been the chef, but yeah. my husband is the cook. Okay. But now, actually. It's mostly my husband. So if I um, if I start to cook, the problem with me is if I'm going to cook, it's like I can't just make a small thing of soup. I have to make like six pots of it and then distribute it to all my friends. If I'm going to make, I just, everything has to be complicated. And so he's the chef. And if I start doing stuff, he's an amazing cook. Um, and so if I start cooking, he'll say, is that how you want to dice those onions? Oh, uh, did you want to turn the heat down on that? So I you know. <laughs> so when you're having people over, what's your signature dish that you guys normally put together for people? Oh, we are big meat eaters. We love yeah. steak, classic dinners. Uh, I mean, last night we did a, we actually did a lobster dinner last night mm -hmm. um, just for ourselves with my mom's homemade potato salad that I made, my mom didn't make. But um, 
we often do like just um, really cool cuts of meat, like these these huge like they look like uh, Fred Flintstone size steaks, and then we and then it, you so it's it's a steak on a bone, but it's that thick. And then you cut it up almost like a roast. We do that quite a lot. There's a, there's a name for it. I think it's a steak Florentina, maybe. I can't remember. But. Well, it, whatever it's called, skin interviews are coming over for dinner when this yeah. quarantine is over. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> We're definitely coming over. As the week it's over, I'm driving up to Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us what you do uh, in your spare time to wind down or relax. A sailing is a really big part of uh, of our lives and of our community. Um, we have a little sailboat that we keep over on the Toronto Island, and that's our cottage. So we, we go over on Fridays with Abby, and I love it because having grown up in smaller towns and out east, in Toronto you do feel a little bit like you can't let your kids run freely. Um, and on the island, we the kids have that freedom. So they, they have their friends, they build forts, they have little boats they run around in, like little dinghies and little sailboats, and they're gone for the day. Um, and it's very social. We, we have a community there. We always barbecue together. And uh, we go out on the lake. We do small little trips. And then my husband and I both, we actually met racing sailboats. And so that racing aspect is also a big part of uh, what we do. And I'm guessing you're very competitive. A little bit, yes. <laughs> just, He's not a sailor than I am, but just a little. Yeah. So let's talk. Let's talk a little bit of work now. Let's talk about your profession. And if there was one thing that people don't know about your profession that you wish they did, what would it be? I think it's just knowing who the players are. So. I think that there's one of my favorite phrases is uh, a, a rising tide raises all ships. Yeah. So I'm very supportive. If anyone wants to learn from me, they want to come hang out in my office. Um, they have questions for me. When I give talks, I always offer my email. I'm very open. But I think it's important that people know who they're dealing with. And I don't like when people pretend to be who they aren't. So if you're a nurse, if you're a dermatologist, if you're a plastic surgeon, just say who you are and be proud of that. Yeah, right. Uh, I like if that. You're trying to be someone else. So they'll say, oh, I saw this dermatologist or, you know, someone did my Botox and I don't know who they are. I think they're a so-and-so. And then we look them up and I'm just like, just be who you are. If you're really good at, at what you do, it, it shouldn't matter. Right. Okay. Yeah. But be honest about it. And just... A little bit of advice maybe for a young derm or a young physician coming into the uh, cosmetic derm field. Is there an obstacle or a challenge that you faced maybe earlier in your career um, that you had to overcome that sort of helped define your career or something that sort of built your, your, your reputation or something that you wish you had a little bit more advice about uh, when that obstacle or, or challenge came about? I think one of the biggest things at the beginning is you're so eager to use the skills you have and um, grow that part of your practice that sometimes you take on patients or challenges that you shouldn't. So it could be something that's above your skill set and you have to be humble, which, you know, we're not. We got to where we are because, you know, we're smart and we worked hard and we're well trained, but there's always things that aren't in your skill set. Um, and so don't be afraid to reach out for help. Don't be afraid to say, you know what, I don't think I can help you with that, but I do know someone who could and, you know, be collegial and refer people. Um, and then the other thing is, is it's okay to say no to patients if they come in and you think it's not a good fit because it is a bit of a marriage. Um, you know, not every doctor and every patient are a good fit together for many reasons, personalities, uh, styles. So don't be afraid to say, I don't think I'm the right doctor for you. If you get that weird spidey sense, you will never regret saying no to a patient, but there's many times you'll regret saying yes. Mm, I love that. Yes, I, I love that. Um, being a successful business owner and being somebody who I consider in Toronto a celebrity dermatologist because- That's you, you've got, Well, you've done a lot of work on television. You're sought out as a, as a, you know, as somebody that's a KOL, like a leader in our industry, right? I mean, here we have you with Dr. Cook and tell me about the two shows I see you on here. So uh, the one show is um, Annette, I can't remember her last name. That's uh, CTV Ottawa. 
Yep. And then, um, and then the other one is uh, BT. So uh, with Dina and I, oh, I can't remember her co-host name either. That's awful of me. Um, but Breakfast Television Toronto. Yep. Which I do a regular. I do a regular um, uh, piece on Breakfast Television. Not as much right now during COVID, but. Do you ever find that when you reach kind of that quote unquote celebrity status that people look at you as though you're chasing the fame rather than the expertise? Have you had to deal with that ever? You know, it's not something I've had said to my face. I think it has to do with what, like, what is your purpose and why I, why I, um, why I do those things. And right. for me, education is really important. So I have residents in my practice. Um, I'm constantly, you know, seeking educational opportunities, and I see this public outreach as a way to ed to educate the public. So we talk a lot about uh, sunscreen, mold checks, uh, products. So for me, it's just part of my educational role. So I think I if, if you come if you come to it from a good place and not from a place of trying to be famous, um, then I think that reads true. And I, and I just want to remind everybody that's watching the interview that if you go on Dr. Julia Carroll's Instagram, which is Dr. Julia Carroll, she always got these little minute clips of like 50 second secrets or a few little posts and um, they are very educational and they're things that need to be said and said often. And that's what I like about your Instagram. Tell me something that, you know, with all your years of experience pisses you off about our industry. I think I already said it. It's the people that pretend to be who they aren't. Right. You know? So be proud of who you are. Don't try to masquerade. Like you go on some people's websites and they list all these like fake credentials. Um, when you go on my website, there's really not that much in terms of credentials. So like I'm a dermatologist. You know, that's where that's where I'm at. Um, so just people who rep misrepresent themselves as something that they're not. Be who you are. Stand behind that. If you're not proud enough to stand behind who you are, then improve yourself. And change it. Absolutely. Yeah. Who do you look up to in our industry? Oh, God, there's so many people. Um, who comes by? You know who someone has been a great mentor and friend to me is Sandy Scott Nikki. Uh, I don't she you don't know her? No, I'm going to look her down. She's an amazing dermatologist. Uh, I worked at her office when I first started, and, I, and she trained me as well. And she has a great career. She mixes medical dermatology, cosmetic, and she also has an academic career. Uh, she's an expert in uh, contact dermatitis. And she wrote a fantastic book called Beyond Soap. I feel like such a jerk that I don't know her. Yeah, I we know. should get her on the show. We need to get her on the show. We should get her on the show. Yeah, yeah. She's amazing. And uh, I just think the way that she's, that she's uh, again, she's always straight, stayed true to herself. She did extra training in contact dermatitis. And she, because of that, she's an ingredient expert, and I've learned so much from her over the years. And uh, she, she speaks the truth. She, she does not beat around the bush. And uh, and she wrote this fantastic book. Um, she was, uh, she's been in Oprah magazine, and she's been all over the place. Um, and I, and I think she's that's I look up to her because she stays true to herself, and she balances this academic cosmetic mix and medical as well. I love it. So we're gonna to go to we're gonna to go to COVID soon, but before we go to COVID soon, I want to bring up a photo because I think you may have a little bit of a funny story to tell here. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> so that's my friend Rob Emery, and um, he and my husband were on the um, Canada the sailing team for the Canada's Cup, which they won. Woohoo! <laughs> so it's like the America's Cup, but it's the Canadian version. So it's a Can Am. Uh, competition. And uh, so Rob, I was the team doctor and I had all my supplies and everything with me. Rob took that, it's called the winch handle. It, he took it to the face. And uh, so when they got back to the island, I, uh, I got to sew him up and he's bald. So we were a little concerned about the, uh, not bald, sorry, that's really bad to say. Sorry, Rob. He has a shaved head. <laughs> Which is his style. And uh, anyway, we wanted to make sure the scar looked really good. So I sewed it up. That was literally sitting uh, at just, just adjacent to the boat and whipped in some stitches. And he's good as new. Love it. That's that's awesome. Yeah, I often get called on to uh, to do stitches for my, my sailing friends. They're very accident prone <laughs> on and off boats. Yeah. 
we had a we ever got a buddy in Ottawa here who's a physician, and whenever one of us take a puck to the face at hockey, he gets a phone call like ten o'clock at night, and you, you just go around to his house and he'll stitch you up quickly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I had fourteen stitches in uh, my best friend's son's chin last weekend because he fell off his bike, split his yeah. chin open, and broke his thumb. Ouch! Oh no. Yeah. Okay, on that note, let's go to COVID. Let's talk about COVID. So let's talk a little bit about um, how, how, first, how it's affecting your business and, and how you you and Sonia are looking to pivot around this current time we're in. Yeah, I mean, it really, I mean, we, 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 we were closed until very recently. We were completely closed. Um, I'd already done some telemedicine in the past. I think at least as a dermatologist, we, I was at a completely cosmetic practice, so we had that mix of medical and cosmetic. So we pivoted more to the medical, um, and we started to dig into our referrals and trying to get people seen, um, because when we open up, we're not sure what kind of volume we'll be able to see. Um, but it really, it exposed some warts in our practice, no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we had to, you know, we applied for different loans and things to the government, and and we had to dig into our numbers and we, you know, we, we just been doing well. And so we, we had some idea of the numbers, but we didn't have a real day by day, month by month take on things. And it was a little shocking when we added things up because things were fine. So it didn't matter. But so it's been great though, because we've really been working well with our staff. We've been doing training. Like I said, we're working on our website um, we're looking into some programming for our patients that I think will be really fantastic for them. And um, it's been a good time to just look at what we love doing and what we don't. And it really has brought home for me that I really love my job. Yeah. You know, there's no question in our minds that we love our patients and we love what we do. And we just can't wait to get back to whatever new iteration of that uh, comes our way. And hopefully, maybe we're only three, maybe four weeks away. Yeah, I don't know. You know, we've been seeing the odd patient in the office, and it's yeah. it's uh, it's so nice to see people. But yeah. Let, yeah, let's hope. Yeah, I love the fact that you're looking at numbers because uh, I think it's a it's a great time to do it. And and I've I've personally had a lot of phone calls from physicians over this time uh, to talk to them. They've rung me up to get get a little bit of advice on their numbers and stuff like that. And this is the best time to do it. Um, because yeah. you've got to you got to make the most of a time like this. You do, and and you know when when you when you are running with less patients, you have to look at the staff and sort of say, what do we really want to do? And are these the best people? And um, you know, how can we maximize you know everybody's contribution? So that's been interesting. And you know, as doctors, we're generally really bad business people, but I think it's because we're very trusting people. We come always from a place of like a good place and a trusting place, and it's hard for us to you know, not treat the world the way that we treat the world. Yep. So we, I think we get burned a lot. But one of the things I'm looking at, I'm also the president of the Canadian Association of Aesthetic Medicine. And, and we have our conference in the fall, which we're revamping right now. But one of the things that I'm hoping we can really bring to our members and the physicians is a really good business program. So, you know, almost a mini MBA, because I think a lot of us have realized that we don't we don't pay enough attention to that because we're successful and things just kind of roll along. But we could be more successful. We have to be prepared for the ups and the downs. Is that the conference that you're on skin interviews to be part of? Maybe. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we might be available, actually. Have you checked? Oh, the have you checked have our people call your people? Okay. I think that would be fun. We definitely should explore that. Yeah. So last question on COVID. Just say we open up today, everything's safe. What's the one thing you're personally missing that you're going to go out and do straight away? Mm -hmm. It's just being with my friends. You know, I just I have lots of girlfriends and very social my calendar is packed. I'm always, you know, that's why I started drink with the derm because I, I'm often at the end of the day, I'll have a friend, they'll come get a little treatment and then we'll run across the street um, to Phoebe's or Piano Piano and, and, and catch a cocktail, just a really quick catch up. Like I'm one of the reps introduced me to this word, word called Cinderella drinks. Um, I like that. 
Yeah. So you just, you go, you have one drink and then at six o'clock you're gone or seven o'clock you're gone home in time for dinner. Love that. I like that before you can turn into a pumpkin. Yeah. <laughs> I love George, it. Who is that? Um, I hate the fact that we're getting towards the end of our interview and we're going to get right into the quick fire questions shortly. But um, before we get into that, I want to, I want to talk about mental health because um, you come across as somebody that's very positive. Um, and, you know, one of the things we've noticed while doing these interviews is a lot of the, the dermatologists or the professionals, I should say, we shouldn't just um, segregate it, but all the professionals we've spoken to, the ones that are most self-aware have this very positive Zen quality to them. What are some of the things, and you're very self-aware, which I like about it. At least you come across that way. I don't feel like I am, but that's... <laughs> you come across that way. So what are some of the things um, that you use to cope with, you know, times where you're not feeling quite yourself, where you're down, or your staff is not feeling quite themselves, and you have to navigate through all that? What would be some of the advice? So particularly COVID-specific things. Um, you know, there's a great group of women and I call them uh, the OG Branksome uh, crowd. So my daughter goes to Branksome Hall. Yeah. And um, we just started this, this texting group early on uh, when COVID started. And those women have been amazing. They're all smart, um, funny women who, who enjoy, you know, a little bit taking the piss out of themselves a little bit. We saw each other funny memes. You know, I did have a little breakdown at one point, just, you know, homeschooling. I lost it. And they sent me like page, you know, pages of messages. It makes me want to cry, actually. And they just had my back. And we have Zoom calls together. And those girls have been really, really important to me. So that connection. And they're not the women that I necessarily am spending all my time with outside of COVID. But this little group has formed, and it's it's been really great. And now, actually, only one of them is in my daughter's grade. They all are at different schools, but that's been really connecting for us. Um, Obviously, my family, you know, just I have to, I always, you know, we, we've, we've, we snuggle a lot together. Um, I got a Peloton. That's been helpful. <laughs> I love the Peloton. I know. My husband's like, you got a what? What? Now? <laughs> and uh, at my office, we have Wine Friday. And oh, uh, we all gather in our staff room and we just, have a cocktail and we reflect on the day. Um, yeah, I don't think, you know, and you know what else? I love podcasts um, for two reasons. I like podcasts to uh, educate myself. I'm, I'm a bit um, crazy for time though. So I always listen to them on 1.5. So um, I can get <laughs> if it's, if I slow it down if I miss something. But then my other trick is um, my friend calls it Big Brother in my ear. I love watching garbage television. And then when I really, really can't sleep, uh, you like Big Brother. <laughs> I love, I love, love Island, Big Brother, all that sort of stuff. It's, it's so bad. But and then I'll listen to the podcast about it. So I, I listen to it at night when I can't sleep. And I put, because my head goes a lot at night. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot to worry about. And I worry about my team, my staff, my family my patients. So I put the podcast in my ear and it's just interesting enough that I don't think about the things that are stressing me out. And then I fall asleep. Love that. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I love that. All right. Are you ready for the quick fire questions? Here we go. Red or blue? Blue. Black or white? Black. Green or blue? Green. Um, superpowers. Flying or being invisible? Flying. I don't want to hear what people say about me. <laughs> flying, or, <laughs> flying or reading minds? Flying. Cats or dogs? Both. Mom or dad? No way. I got to say both. I haven't seen my parents since October. Yeah, fair enough. I hope you see them soon. Favorite yeah. drink? Aperol spritz. Ooh. Champagne or wine? Champagne. Tequila or vodka? Vodka. Burgers or pasta? Pasta. Um, Asian or Indian food? Indian. Uh, stuck in isolation for 12 more weeks. You can only take one skincare product with you. Mm. Oh, that's not fair. Uh, <laughs> one. one, one. I'm a dermatologist. Mm. 
Oh. <laughs> no. Okay, we'll come back to it. We'll come back to it. No. Uh, vitamin C. Vitamin C. You get up tomorrow morning. You have the option. I don't know. You get up tomorrow morning. You have the option of doing your hair or getting your Botox. Botox. <laughs> I have Botox. I'm going to get my hair done. <laughs> uh, coffee or tea? Coffee. Nathan or me? I'm going with Nathan. Yes! Yes! What? I'm reading that. I'm starting to come back. Nathan hurt his eye. Oh, thank you so much. I need this. my heart, babe. My heart. <laughs> I would have sang with you. We would have had steak and talked about the Argentinian. This, this, is, this is what he does every time. Every time I get a vote, he tries to talk them out of it. Uh, I'm sticking. True to my word. Thank you so much, you. I really appreciate that. Well, it breaks my heart, but okay. I'll let you close the show with two questions, baby. <laughs> So we we ask two questions to every uh, guest on the show to finish the show. Because we're called Skin Interviews, we need to kind of relate it back to the skin. So the, the, the first question is, what's your favorite skincare routine while you're in isolation? I have a pretty simple routine because I do a lot of things. You know, I think I always tell my patients that, you you know, you I can do... I can, the, like, basically your skin has to look good for the things we do in the office to look good. And I think that's the reverse as well. So I do a lot of, you know, laser, ulcera, microneedling. And so therefore my skin routine is actually relatively simple. Um, I do a glycolic wash in the morning. And uh, then I have uh, a product called Emapel, which is um, for uh, perimenopausal skin. Um, <laughs> so it's been great. It's a, it's a new product to Canada. I love that one. Um, and then a, an L ascorbic acid. No, sorry. I do the L ascorbic acid, then the Emapel, then a moisturizer with sunscreen in it. Um, that's Emapel is exclusive to you guys, right? Right now. Am I right? I think we might be the only ones that have it just because we were like nerding out at a conference and we, we saw it and we really liked it. It's not, you know, they, we sought them out. They didn't seek, seek us out. So Pretty cool. I, like uh, that. I don't know. Some other people, I can't say if we're the only ones that have it or not, but we just really like the science behind it. Um, and then evening, it's again, wash the face. It depends if I'm dry or not. I'll use a moisturizing cleanser. And then um, I'll flip between either a, a topical glycolic acid or retinoid. It's pretty simple. And then a moisturizer on top of that. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. So I don't use brands, I, but the thing is, I like literally. If you saw my my bathroom counter, much to my husband's dis, it's you know, you're all there. Everything, everything. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're we're product junkies too. We love it as well. No. Hey, um, and thank you so much for being on the show. It's such a pleasure to have you on. But before we finish, we just want to ask you one last question, and that is. Uh, who would you like to see on our show? And can you help us get them on the show? Have you had Shino Bay? No. No, we'd love to. We'd He's love to. just from Miami and he we would love did that. Yeah. A trip. Yeah, he's he's yeah. Cool. He's great energy. I mean, he's very, very busy right now, but um yeah. I may be able to hook you up. And he yeah. was at Cam, right? Kate Goldie is also amazing. Okay. That is at Cam this year, I think. Pardon me? Was Shino Bay at Cam? Shino Bay was the star of Cam this year. Yeah. 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 That's right. He's great. Yeah, he's really fun and super smart. Really has a has just the, the best heart. I love that. Mm -hmm. You have a great heart too, even though you pick Nathan. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> you both come over. There's the steak is really big. <laughs> well, listen, I want to say thank you for being here. I know how busy you are, despite, you know, how we think that we're all not as busy. You have been quite busy. And uh, I want to say thank you for taking the time to be on Skin Interviews today. And I want you to give all of your staff, if you're allowed to, a big under the radar hug for me because I miss them all. Um, and Dr. Dr. Cook as well. I will. I'll let Nathan say goodbye before I close the show. Yeah, th thank you so much, Julia. And uh, we can't wait to see you after this isolation. We're coming around for dinner. Yeah. Oh, it's been Perfect. my pleasure. Thank you for doing this. This has been a real spirit lift for everybody watching the show and being able to contribute. It's been fantastic.
Thank you so much. Hang up backstage. We're going to catch up right after I close the show. To everybody watching, make sure you head over to compassdermatology.ca to see Dr. Julia Carroll's professional practice. Of course, you can follow her on Instagram at Dr. Julia Carroll. Make sure to follow her on Instagram so you can catch her A Drink with a Derm Show, which is a live Instagram platform for everyone. I want to say thank you, everybody, for watching today. Enjoy your time at home with your kids or your loved ones. I know it's a little bit different than what we've had, but we're not getting this time back. So there is a positive to all this. Stay healthy, stay safe, and make sure to take good care of your skin. Have a good one. Take care, everyone.